Should book bloggers be paid for reviews? I've seen so much drama about this before and I'm really excited to talk about it because I feel like I am on the unpopular opinion this side. Ah yes, so apparently there's been some drama and controversy before about whether people should be paid for doing book reviews and I don't really understand the controversy because I don't yet why the answer would be no. As someone who's only been on booktube for a few months but has been on YouTube for years, I feel like maybe I'm coming at this from a different standpoint. But I've seen a lot of people say, oh, book bloggers shouldn't be paid for reviews because that'll make them have rose tinted glasses on when they're reading the book and they won't be completely honest, they'll be afraid to say the bad things about the book and they'll recommend things that won't really be worthy of their recommendations just because they're paid. I don't get that. I feel like if someone's being paid to review something, they should be completely honest. And when you're getting a book from Netgalley, say, or if you're sent a book from publishers, you're sent an ARC or just a finished copy, you're still getting a payment of some form because you're getting this free gift and you're going to review it and that shouldn't affect your review overall. So why would money change it? I've been really harsh on some of the books that I've reviewed from Netgalley because I just don't believe in them. I don't think that they're any good. So like there was one book where I said it was like an amateur wrote rape culture, which led to someone finding my blog by searching amateur rape, which is so disturbing that you don't even want to think about it. I don't anyway. But I just don't get why people wouldn't trust someone on their reviews just because they're paid for it. Like, they're being paid to share their opinion, the same way that someone in the newspaper is being paid to review a book. And sure, maybe the publishers won't like what they're being told, but it's the publisher's job and the writer's job to make sure that the book is actually going to be good and to give it to reviewers who are going to like it, and then they'll make the good review. And even if they pay someone to do the, to do the review, that doesn't mean that's going to be a good review, it just means that's going to be a review. I think in general though when it comes to book bloggers, something that I have a huge problem with on booktube is that there are so many people who are nice and it drives me insane and this is a rant for another day I know, but so many people are nice and it just feels kind of fake, like they're leaving out the bad points because they got the book for free. So I understand why people will be concerned that if they're being paid to do the review, then they're going to be even less truthful and they're going to hide all of the bad points and they're going to be like, oh yeah, this is brilliant and shove the book in your face and try and promote it so that it'll get views and get looked up on Amazon and then eventually get purchased by people. But the thing is, if you know that the person isn't great at reviewing, then you're not going to trust their review anyway. Maybe if someone does get paid for a review and then they give it a bad review and everyone's like, oh, don't trust them. Well, there goes their trustworthiness anyway. Nobody's going to watch them anymore. Nobody's going to listen to them or care what they say because they're not going to be trustworthy. Let people get paid and then you can figure out for yourself if they're worth listening to. Personally, I think that if you have grown a large audience and you've put in so much work to be able to have lots of people listen to your opinions and take them into account when they're deciding what they're gonna buy, or maybe they just listen to them and go, okay, yeah, I'm gonna stick that book on my TBR, or I'm gonna take that book off my TBR. You are, I hate the word influencer, but you are influencing people in a way, and I think that goes for everyone across the board when it comes to small booktubers with like 50 subscribers to people with 300,000 and I think at the end of the day if you have grown a large audience and you're able to give books a huge platform and you could potentially affect book sales you should be paid for that by the publishers because they're going to be making money off it if you're promoting their book and you're saying how brilliant it is you should be paid also for helping them make all that profit at the end of the day, it's not easy for booktubers to get a lot of sponsorships. Like, if you can't rely on publishers for sponsorship, then where do you go? You have to go to stationary brands, you have to go to, like, I saw Christina, oh, I can't remember her second name, Poland Banana Books. She did a book video where it was sponsored by a glasses place. It's easy to just let it be sponsored by a book publisher. And then they can be like, yeah, here's some books, review them please, be honest. At the end of the day, if you say to a publisher, yeah, you can pay me to review this book, but it doesn't mean I'm going to necessarily be nice about it, I'm going to be honest, then they already know in advance and they can say to you, okay, well, we want someone who's going to be nice and not honest, 
and they can take the book back and then you can talk dirt about them if you want if you're like not professional or if you just want to do like booktube drama maybe you don't have to name them for it but you can talk about how it happened in general or you'll get a publisher being like yeah sure we believe in this book we believe that you're going to enjoy it and you're gonna say nice things and we think that it should be read by your audience so here you go here's some money please promote it please say that you love it or you hate it or whatever you think of it in the end because even if you say something bad about it you're still bringing it to people's attention so you're still bringing the author to people's attention and you're making people aware of the book and sure maybe a lot of them will go yeah no i'm not gonna give that a go but some people might hear about it and they might hear what the story is and go you know what they didn't enjoy it but it seems like the type of thing i would enjoy and then they'll still end up being aware of the book and buying it. I don't get why this is any different to people who review beauty products or food products or anything else because at the end of the day it is still a review that people are being paid for. Especially when it's makeup, loads of people are paid for that and I don't get why it'd be different. Maybe it's because books are more a personal thing. Makeup is you apply it and then it might work for your skin, it might not. Whereas books are more personal and you're reading it and you're experiencing it and your experience may be completely different to someone else's even though it's the same book. And maybe it's because usually books are written by one person and then they just have a team who help make it that unless it's self-published. Maybe that's it. I don't know. If you think that book bloggers should or shouldn't be paid, please let me know why you think that because I just don't understand why they wouldn't be paid if you have a big audience. Obviously if you have like 50 subscribers like you're not going to be paid and I don't, I tell you what, I, I don't mean to be mean but I find this so funny when people are like, they stick it in their description or they say in the video this video was not sponsored by any brand and is my honest opinion and they have like 20 subscribers I'm like nobody thought that that was gonna be sponsored by the brand because nobody knows who you are nobody trusts your opinion other than like your friends so is that mean I feel like that was mean but yeah I don't know that's my personal feeling on it obviously I'm just saying that people should be paid so that when I have like 300,000 subscribers, I can justify it being like, I always thought they should be paid. <laughs> I'm only 299,800 subscribers away from being a millionaire, yo. Because obviously every YouTuber is a millionaire. Yeah, if you like this video, you can subscribe to me up here anyway. Uh, I talk about books and stuff on this channel. And then down here I do mental health and feminism and dating and stuff. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you are well. If you're not, then I'm sorry about that. Uh, is that my new catchphrase now? I said that in my last video as well. Thanks very much for watching though. Slon.